you seen the BBC Pep Guardiola documentary? No. You've not, you're in it, of course. <laughs> you've, you've not seen it? No, no. I just wonder, because it's obviously a quite an inspirational story, and it talks quite a lot to uh, an individual, obviously, someone you're close to, kind of really keeping the faith in, in difficult moments. And obviously it has a nice ending for Pep. Um, I just wondered, do you ever find your faith tested, and how do you kind of... How do you kind of keep that at the high pressure moments such as mm. Sunday? Yeah, it was one of the the biggest lessons and one of the most impressive things that um, I witnessed when I was at, at Man City in that role, um, which after the first very difficult year when everybody in England was saying you cannot play that type of game with this type of profile and this and that from the top, they said we keep going in the same direction, we fully believe in what you're going to do. And it was zero question to go <coughs> in a different direction. And for me, that was the key point when after they took off. Right, and I was going to say, just moving on slightly, um, you've touched on it already about a theme in, well, I suppose the season has been really good football, creating chances, but sometimes the last action has been missing, unfortunately. Uh, obviously, against Liverpool last time, a, a clear example. Is that something that you uh, can deal with as a manager in the build-up to a massive game like Sunday? For sure, and uh, we should not take any responsibility out of that because our job at the end is to win football matches and and to and to that, that scoreline reflects actually the performance and what the team produces. And we have to coach that, we have to improve it, we have to evolve the play, we have to create more situations and that has to fall on us, that's for sure. It sometimes feels like you want your team to score the perfect goal. And we brought it up against Forest. And, and um, do you feel like your team can react when that isn't happening, when it isn't working? And not just with a set piece or a throw, but they can react in open play to try something different, to try something a bit wacky that isn't in the game plan if something isn't going wrong, uh, uh, well? Yes, but if you don't expect the perfect goal from open play, but you have so much density there, but then throwing, it doesn't work either. Or a set piece doesn't work either, so how do you score? There's not many more situations to score. I don't mind ugly goals. I love ugly goals. I love cheap goals. Let's have them, but you have to produce them. This one, I don't know how to coach it, eh? to tell somebody to hit there, hit in the, in the head and go the other direction. That one, I don't reach that. And then you spoke about, obviously, working for Pep, and you would have seen that before big games, sometimes he would do something crazy tactically, try something different. Is that within you? Do you sometimes think, I don't want to be too predictable, I might try something crazy here? Or in these games, do you think just over the process? I think we have to try to do what we think um, give us the best chance to win the game. <coughs> and if it's an element of surprise, if it's an element to create certain issues to the opponent or for them to adapt to, to what they normally do, fully on board, if you put the players especially in position that they are comfortable. Do you worry about being um, too predictable sometimes? Do you watch your team and think um, we're being a bit too predictable in, in how we play? It's not my impression. Gary? Is that a sort of old thing that, that, that it's in last year that school, uh, school early and it made a difference? Uh, do you think that when you look at a Liverpool game that, it, is it, that's, that it's on the players' minds? And if so, how can you actually sort of train them that if they don't get that chance and they don't score it, that they, they just forget it and they kind of, because it felt like it was, as the game wore on, they were, they were thinking about those missed chances. Yeah, but I clip a lot of images after 54, 57, 63 minutes chances and the reaction of all the players were incredible to each other. Against Fulham, I didn't like it. 1-1, one, one, Bukaya misses a huge chance. I didn't like that reaction. The other day, I really loved it. But again, in Anfield, we were up after three minutes. <laughs> That doesn't mean you're going to win the game. So it's, you have to play for 96 minutes. A lot of things can happen in a football match, and, and you have to just play the next <coughs> ball. That's it. You clip the, what do you mean you clip? You show them. Yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. <coughs> Hi, Mikael. Um, Hi. With Jurgen Klopp, he's seen as this very passionate, emotional uh, manager. In some ways, he mirrors yourself in that way with your passion. Do you think he's an example of the, the need for passion in the game and do, does that show also that it's, it's fine for a manager to show his emotion and be passionate in the game and on the touchline too? I personally love what he transmits as a manager but no, it's only not the passion uh, it's with the way he 
he uses his arm or his body language, but as well the interaction with his players and the chemistry that you see there. I think it's something very powerful. After the uh, Boris game, some of the fans were saying, oh, the players need to shoot more, need to shoot more. Do you think it's, that's too simplistic? Or do you think your players actually do need to, where, where possible, uh, take shots in and around the box? It's about taking the shot when you have to. No? It's a, like any decision making, not too early, not too late, um, in the right moment, uh, with the right intention, and that's football. And after the, um, the Palace game, on match of the day, they obviously they analysed the set pieces. And one of the interesting parts was uh, Martin Odegaard and his socks. Is there any truth in that at all, where he's pulled his socks? <laughs> I'm not going to tell you that. 